Hello and welcome to this video in which I'll explain how to add Bates numbers to a collection of PDF documents in a library of folders in Windows Explorer and I'll use Adobe Acrobat Pro to apply the Bates numbers. So Bates numbers in this case are going to be sequential numbers that run through all of the documents in the library of documents starting at one and going to the last page and not restarting the numbering at the beginning of each new document. So having a unique number on every page is often useful if you want to refer to the document in a discussion, for example in court in the legal context. So the first thing you'll want to do is ensure that your library contains only PDF documents. So you could check that by doing a search for not PDF and only folders should come up. If any other documents come up that aren't PDF documents, you should consider converting those to PDF documents before proceeding. You then take the path of the folder, open up Adobe Pro, go to Tools, scroll down to the Stamp tool, click on Bates Numbering, and then click on Add. Then click the Add Files drop-down list, and we'll add a folder because we want to Bates stamp all of the documents in the folder. So you just come into the folder field over here, go Control V to paste your path from the clipboard into the field, click OK and it'll then generate the PDF document list into uh, the window over here. We'll make a output file because ultimately we'll want to import the Bates numbers into an Excel spreadsheet so that we can have the Bates numbers listed alongside the other document information. So I'll click create log file and I note that the log file is going to be saved on the desktop. Click OK. I'll then click this OK button over here to open up the Bates number properties window. I'll click in the top box over here for right header text because I want to insert my Bates numbers in the top right. I'll then click insert Bates number. I'll make a prefix of P assuming I'm acting for the plaintiff in this legal dispute. I'll click OK. I will increase the size of the Bates numbers to 12 to make them a bit more readable and I'm also going to put them a little bit closer to the edge of the page just so that they're not very likely to obscure important text. I can then click the OK button and it'll proceed with the bait stamping process. In this case there's 84 files in the library of folders so at the end of the process it'll display a message hopefully saying that all 84 have been stamped. Yes they have so I'll click OK. I can then shut that down and if we now go into one of these folders and open up one of the documents we should see that in the top right hand corner it's got the Bates number shown and those will be applied sequentially through the entire set of documents. So the next step is to import those Bates numbers into an Excel spreadsheet that lists all of the documents. I did previously make a video that explains the process for creating a list of documents in Excel by extracting the path information out of a library such as this. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same spreadsheet. So here is that previous spreadsheet. You can see it's got columns for links, date, description, category, relative path, and file name. So what I'll do is I'll import the Bates data and I'll place it over here on the right hand side. So what I do is I go to data, get external data from text, I then have to browse to the location. I need to ensure that all file types are shown because a log file will not be displayed unless I do that. So I just went past it, there it is. I'll import it. Now your dialog window here might look a little bit different depending on your version of Excel, but I'm going to import it as delimited data and it's going to be tab delimited and that's it. So I'll just click finish and cell H2 is an appropriate place to put it because that is the row with the first document listed in my existing spreadsheet. And you can see over here it's imported the Bates numbers along with the file names. So what I need to do is I need to ensure that the file names in this data set which pre-existed in the spreadsheet match the file names that were added when I just imported the Bates number a moment ago. So you can see the first file is 2007 and then it goes to 2011, but that's not the same for this set over here. So what I'll do is I'll first select this set of data on the left hand side over here and I'll just sort it by going to sort and filter and sort A to Z. I'll then go to the set of data on the left hand side which was in the spreadsheet before. I'll select just up to 
the column with the file names previously existing. This time I've got to use custom sort because I want to sort by column F, which is not the leftmost column of the data set. I'm going to uncheck the headers, say sort by column F, and go OK. And I should now see that my two sets of data match, and indeed they do. So $19.97, $19.97, they all match. So I'm now confident that my Bates numbers are correct. I can go ahead and delete these two columns over here because I don't need a duplicate listing of the file names. I'm just going to make this column narrower so you can see it on a slightly narrower screen. And I can check the links by clicking on them. And that's row number four. It shows that the document is Bates number five. And indeed, row number four has documents starting Bates number five. So I now have a list of documents with the corresponding Bates numbers. And so if I want to pull up a document by a particular Bates number, I know which link to click on. And that'll hopefully facilitate quick access to documents during a conversation or during presentation in court. All right. Thanks. Hope that was helpful.